अनिंदू सर अनिंदू सर सूरज कैन यू हियर मी Noel, can I be heard? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My. Yes, sir. 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 So I think you will not miss out. Okay. So okay. Uh, how to score three hundred plus in anthropology? You have started attending class one time. हाँ 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 sir. So वही कुछ था. So fine. और काफी weight put on कर लिया लग रहा है. नहीं sir थोड़ा gym चालू कर दिए. अच्छा good है good. ठीक है ठीक है. Okay. Hey guys, uh, let's start in a couple of minutes. Okay. We'll start in another one minute. We'll start. ठीक है. And sir, we are not able to see you. No, I'm not sharing my screen, you know, because uh, I'm share. I'll I'll share my screen, but my video is not required. Actually, mm -hmm. okay. 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 Hmm. All right, so I'll start, and uh, I think you guys can see my screen now. Yes, sir. Yeah, fine. So you know, um, this session is a, this is the second part, day two of the same session. Okay, so in the day one of the same session, this session, you know, we had uh, we had discussed about uh, you know a few. a uh, myths regarding anthropology you know uh, we had discussed about a diagram making and we had discussed about the examples and case studies but i i can see that uh, some of you have joined today itself they were you are not part of the session yesterday i think you will get a recording of it but anyways i will try to do a quick you know brief rephrase you know so that uh, you can know about what you missed out in the last uh, one in, in a very short you know very very brief uh, overview so i was talking in the last class regarding some of the myths some of the myths regarding anthropology anthropology optional has become very popular and you know when anyone becomes very popular he becomes a hero and then he becomes a mythological hero and then there are a lot of mythological stories uh, rotating uh, you know so for example you know uh, if you read modern india 
which book you guys are reading for modern india spectrum sir spectrum yeah so in spectrum you read about you know uh, if i think it is in spectrum or i think in bipan chandra i'm not bipan uh, chandra re recollect uh, it, there's a there's a part where it says that you know when gandhi had become so popular you know that um, uh, during the non cooperation as well as civil disobedience especially non cooperation you know, because his fame came before him you know so we gandhi came to india in 1915 i guess but before that you know his exploits in south africa the way he had you know fought the colonial government in south africa that uh, his stories were already in india you know, so he was already a popular man before he came to india you know so um, when he came to india and he went to champaran and all those places three places he went in the first year and there also he solved some problems so gradually his stature increased so much he became so so popular that some of the people started you know equating him with uh, god and in non cooperation lot of the people you know uh, some of the some of the tribals and uh, peasants thought that you know nothing will happen by chanting the name of gandhi you know even the bullets of the british will not affect them so this was a pure myth you know they uh, raised him to such a such a height you know such a uh, you can say greatness that the real you know the real man had lot of unreal stories about him lot of stories spread about him you know and these stories spread like wildfire so this is called you know myth so a lot of when whenever someone or something becomes popular then obviously a lot of true things about the person or the thing spread out but also lot of untrue things also spread out and that is what is we call myth so one of the myths regarding anthropology is you know that very short syllabus lot of people say take anthropology and you will clear because the syllabus is very short is it really very short i am afraid no it's very important you know to bust these kind of myths you know because some of you will come thinking that anthropology syllabus to main ek mahine mein uda dunga that is not going to happen so actually what happens is what is happening okay so you know actually what happens is uh the syllabus is not short if you just read the syllabus of anthropology read the syllabus of history and geography on the on, on the upsc notification uh if you go topic wise you know how many topics are there in the syllabus the syllabus is not very short but i is, i will tell you that when someone says that the syllabus is short it is not right but it is not totally wrong as well not totally wrong and this is why anthropology is so popular the syllabus is not very short but the number of books that you need to read number of books that you need to read for anthropology are comparatively much lesser than many other popular optionals and no book has to be read cover to cover no book has to be read cover to cover for example physical anthropology pinath pinath has not you know uh, to, I mean, you, you don't have to read cover to cover that's not required at all only certain parts of uh pinath which are part of the syllabus have to be read similarly nadi masnan similarly dk bhattacharya for anthropology similarly other books you don't have to read any book cover to cover so these are the things the less number of books nothing cover to cover plus a lot of syllabus being quite factual and less analytical not too much analysis see a subject like history it is a very old subject history is as old as humanity very old subject you know so there are so many points of views india became independent then there are so many views there is a group that feels that india is still not independent there is a group that feels that the british and the indian national congress collaborated you know some of them say that british left india and it was mercy of british that we got freedom some of them say that we fought and snatched freedom away from the british so so many interpretations of one event one event that is indian indian independence but there are so many more than 10 in different interpretations so so much interpretation and uh, analysis that is not there in anthropology too many interpretations are not there okay so very less interpretations most a lot of part is factual these are the things that make the syllabus you know very easily coverable and that's why you can actually finish the syllabus with some dedication you can finish the syllabus nicely in 3 months 3 months mein syllabus bahut acche se khatam ho jata hai anthropology ka you know in the last class i was saying that you know, i also know people who started studying anthropology after prelims and still cleared the exam but 
back then it was doable because back then there was more than four months gap between prelims and mains but now you don't get that gap okay uh, now the gap is lesser so don't leave it for after the prelims you have to start earlier only and remember that you have to revise okay so no um, okay now so that is one myth second myth is it is for science background guys because it in involves lot of biology genetics blah 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 yes it involves biology it in involves genetics but not of a very high standard when you read current affairs material any compilation any monthly compilation you are reading current affairs, in the science and tech part there are a lot of you know suppose if there is a new dna medicine or new rna based medicine that has come out uh, vaccine you will have some details about dna rna all those things is it too detailed is it like you know reading that do you become a doctor or what is it that complicated guys is it that complicated when you read about dna rna in the current affairs capsules say yes or no don't don't uh, type in the comment okay tell uh, reply verbally no sir it is not right similarly anthropology you know you will see that there are syllabuses regarding fossils and evolution and uh, darwin and uh, you know genetics and this and that alleles allele frequency and all but it's not complicated at all it is very simple and most of the guys a large number of guys who have cleared with anthropology optional had humanities background so so science background is a myth another myth is that you have to make diagrams and the diagrams are very difficult again a myth because yes you have to make diagrams yes the diagrams may look difficult if you have a look at the diagram for example no i don't have it here fine if you look at you know a diagram of a human skull you may feel that okay this is really difficult human skull human spine how how am i going to draw that but the diagrams are very simple you know with some small simple tricks you can easily i don't know why these green lines are coming is someone doing something i don't know because i am not doing it okay so with you know some very simple you know uh, techniques you can very easily make all those diagrams okay in the last class i showed how easy is it it is to make the skull diagram i also showed how easy it is to make india map how easy it is to make world map you know it's very easy within seconds you can make those nicely labeled diagrams and you can score well the diagrams are not difficult at all so these are the myths uh, basically this class is about the boosters or you know what are the things that can boost your marks in anthropology we had already discussed regarding diagrams and maps in the last class okay but to rephrase in very short regarding diagrams one thing the diagrams are very simple if you don't get a simple version try to find out if you do a google that simple diagram of human skull simple diagram of australopithecus skull you will get it if you don't get it you know you will i mean we have in our classes i often show the students how easy it is to draw a human skull or an australopithecus skull with some guidance you know you can easily make those you know uh, simple diagrams make it properly labeled so in properly labeled I, what i was showing is you know that suppose this is a diagram the labeling should not be like this no don't label like that okay how to label it guys anyone how to label it i told on, in the last on, only on one side Mm -hmm. only on the one side okay so and why i'm saying all this i'll tell you why i'm saying all this see these are all the labeling okay i label like this label the diagrams only on the one side very nicely okay the next thing is put your diagram inside a box you don't need a scale or a pencil for that just simply with the with the same pen you can put it inside a box 
and at the bottom right what the diagram is about the figure the figure is about for example human skull okay and next thing i had told was you know try to use different colors by colors you don't need sketch pen and all you can have your ball point pen a black ball point pen a blue ball point pen and maybe you can also keep a green one three ball point pens will make help you make very beautiful diagrams in the last class i i had uh, shown how you know and where exactly you need different colors can anyone recall that yes sir you talked about about gauss's rule gauss's rule yes there's a there's a, there's something called gauss's rule does anyone remember gauss's rule suraj ko to pata hoga i'm sure suraj should know gauss's rule suraj gauss that is basically the growth of uh, paramecium competitive right? yeah very good noel competitive exclusion gauss's law you know it says that even two species are growing up in the same environment same niche what is the meaning of niche in environment ecology function and the habitat of the of any species yeah so function and habitat everything so for example feeding reproducing and uh maybe hiding or living ठीक है hiding whatever so if two animals or two species they are feeding on the same thing at the same time at the same place if they are reproducing in the at the same time at the same place if they try to hide or live at the same time at the same place if all these things they are doing the same which means they are in, they have the same ecological niche if two species have the same ecological niche so there will be a clash and when there is a clash either one will flourish the other will go extinct or they will modify their timings for example they will modify their niche for example i will show two examples two examples one is the experiment done by gauss himself okay so in the first experiment he grew paramecium quadratum that is a species you know you uh, a, a kind of a, you know microorganism that is grown in the lab he grew paramecium i you don't need to remember the spelling right now when you read i'm just trying to show the importance of using different colors in the diagram so right now you don't need to mug up or rem think much about the name paramecium quadratum quadratum is one of the species that he grew separately and then he grew another one paramecium or aurelia so two of them when grown separately they are growing very nicely but when grown you know together this is what happens one of them aurelia flourishes and eliminates the other one when grown together in the same medium they are competing and one of them is excluding the other this is called the principle of competitive exclusion theek okay? hai so one 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 thing that has happened is you know that one of them will be excluded or what else can happen the other thing that can happen is this there is a tree you know and on the tree there are some small birds that feed these are the birds okay that feed on the on the different part of the tree now the same niche a big bird a large bird a more powerful bird appears
a larger more powerful bird appears in the same niche there is competition competition so what happens is the either the smaller species will get eliminated which we saw here or it may adapt how it will adapt it will change its niche it will start feeding at a different part at a different time so what may happen is this is the second stage what may happen is that this smaller one the weaker one it occupies the fringes ekdam niche ekdam niche ekdam upar jahan pe khana kam hai wahan pe they will you know try to feed and leave the main part where most of the food is available for the the bigger bird the red one leave the most of it for the bigger one the bigger one will occupy the meat of the territory where most of the prey is found and the black one will adjust or they will change the timing the black will feed later ki lal wale ko kha lena let the red birds eat and then will whatever is left over will eat so two things happen when they compete in the same niche either one eliminates the other like this one or one of them adapts theek hai this is called adaptive radiation we all have this in paper 1 you don't need to worry much about it so what i'm trying to show is by using different types of colors you know you had to show two types of birds you know you had to show two type of species growing in a petri dish in a lab here using different kinds of colors maybe black ball pen or blue ball pen you can make the diagram really very really effective okay so proper labeling using different colors putting in a box putting the name of the diagram at the bottom and don't start your answer or end the answer with the diagram keep the diagram in the center you write something you write something make the diagram again write something this is this should be the pattern why so much stress on all this so remember that your upsc mains exam is about three things it is not only about content obviously content is important what you read and write is important the knowledge part of it you also need to have time management to finish the paper otherwise you will not pass and presentation this is a very ignored part people ignore the presentation part it becomes even more important in a subject like anthropology where the sources are not too many so lot of people read the same stuff they have same kind of answer in the exam so how do you differentiate your answer from others a professor who is checking 100 copies a day how do you you know make the professor stop and notice your answer that okay i need to read this one nicely this answer looks a little different that you do by these things you know these diagrams properly labeled diagrams systematic diagrams in the center of the answer use of color and all theek okay? hai this is what we had talked about diagrams fine guys everyone okay with this yes sir clear okay now the next thing is regarding the examples and case studies we had discussed this but in short i'll quickly again cover this theek hai okay so just give me a quick minute since this ppt has been already used earlier let me clear it okay we start with examples and case studies just one second guys
by the way where are you guys located all in different parts let me ask aditi where are you located oh so delhi delhi bijli bijli so delhi delhi from delhi yes okay chetan sir from delhi delhi and nikita Yes, Located at where? AP Andhra Pradesh. Sir. Okay, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, all right. Where are you in Andhra Pradesh? You are in Hyderabad. No, sir. Yes, AP Nellore. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Hyderabad is in Telangana. Really sorry. Yeah. My geography is not great. Um, it's also actually current affairs. Noel, I know Noel. You are in Calcutta only. Yes, sir. Okay, Sarah. Sarah, where are you located? Sarah is not able to respond. Suraj. Sir, right now in Jamshedpur, but we'll Jamshedpur. move to Delhi from twentieth March. Twentieth March, okay. Bhagya Lakshmi. Bhagya Lakshmi, she is not fine. And so, you? yeah, I was asking everyone why, where you are located, because you know, it's, uh, I think it must be quite hot already in Delhi. Is it, or is it still cool in Delhi? Normal condition, like no hot, not cool. Actually, because Calcutta is all already warm. I'm, I'm in Calcutta. It's already. Humid, humid, uh, very hot and humid. Not very hot, but humid. Yeah. Hot also. Very hot. We're having to drink a lot of water. Okay. Yeah. So, examples and case studies. So, examples and case studies. It's very obvious. You know, uh, you have to give. So, why I am going to discuss this? It is very obvious. I mean, nothing, nothing great about you know. Someone tells you, you know that you have to write case studies and examples. It's not a. It's not a news. You already know it. Being a UPSC aspirant, you already know that you have to give examples and case studies. But here, I want to discuss something different about it. What I want to discuss is, I had discussed in the last class. I will rephrase that. Try to use diverse examples. Diverse examples. For example, I had given the example of you know, if the question comes on pastoralism. Okay, so you give some examples of pastoral tribes. So you talk about Toda. you know India Indian tribe Todas. bakarwals and gaddis bakarwals and gaddis and you also you know have uh, uh, some african tribes like nuer and masai masai so you give example like this this is one way or the other way you know this, so normally people give like this they will write example and then give all the examples in one line but if you do like this example india you give the indian examples africa you give african examples melanesia or for example uh, you know um, europe so like that if you segregate your examples here are the indian examples toda bakarwal air africa nuer and all if you segregate your examples like these then the examiner not only gets your examples but also feels okay right so this guy has a properly geographically diversified examples here also you have given the same examples but examiner may not not notice that you have tried to you know show how diverse examples you are giving here you are just trying to show it the same examples you are trying to show in a better way this is called presentation you are forcing the examiner to notice that look at this sir i have given you diversified examples okay so that is one way um and one more thing you know for example you know following the current affairs or news and stuff you gather some example that may be unique some unique example which you think others may not be giving sirf tumhare paas hai only you have this example others may not have the example so when you mention such an example you should highlight so the examiner knows examiner looks at it so you can highlight the examples by putting them inside a box 
so you are writing 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 here you have an example you put it inside a box to highlight it okay you have to highlight the things that you have got extra in your answer okay so this is one thing about example um yeah example case studies here now current affairs so yes if you are part of upsc preparation current affairs is going to be your bread and butter there is no two ways about it current affairs so you have to you have to read whether you like it or you don't like it you have to read current affairs for your uh, general studies for your prelims as well as for your optional anthropology optional involved sort of current affairs okay so for example uh, you read about a tribe that you know a certain tribe something has happened it has got forest rights or it has been denied forest rights or you know one of the tribes has been invited by the american government to catch pythons you know so they had this american uh, in lot of parts in america they, they had this invasive what is an invasive species this species is not native to a particular place they are not native to a particular place and what is their yeah. impact when they reach there what they that's why the natural habitat of that place sir. natural yeah. species Yeah. So what happens is, you know, if something is natural to here, if 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 an animal is natural to India, so that animal is somewhere on the food chain. It has its own predators. It has its own, you know, food. ये किसी को खाता है कोई इसको खाता है. You know, there's a a chain of eating and being eaten. So their numbers are in check. But when an outside species invades and comes to this habitat, it may not have a predator. You know, it may be eating too fast and too much for the local you know ecology they destroy the local ecology they push out the local inhabitants and they destroy the local ecology so for uh, so the, so also one invasive species the uh, burmese python python of myanmar burma origin they had somehow reached united states you know the rich people there they have this you know you can say shock in hindi we say you know they have this uh, habit of having exotic pets and all so some of them you know got burmese python and this burmese python someone let them loose and they multiplied like anything and suddenly the situation was like you know you your dog has gone out and has not returned why some burmese python has swallowed to swallow your dog you know so that that was the condition there so the americans authorities they invited a tribe from india to catch the python at a very fast speed because they are expert snake catchers can you name the tribe sapera sir sapera is not a tribe sapera is a you know a, a kind of name given to those who do snake charming but there is a tribe i will narrow down your search it's in south Cerula india tamil nadu uh huh cerula tribe like who gave the answer cerula tribe who gave the answer me sir chetan chetan awesome great so it was also mentioned in the pushpa movie sir yeah that i have seen okay they mentioned okay i i i have seen pushpa but i did not uh, maybe like, i did not i did not notice that part but that but the jab him have you seen jab him yeah sorry sorry jab him sir yeah right right yeah so jab him <laughs> so pushpa yeah, sorry, i was sir. thinking where in pushpa was cerula Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Jai Bhim, yes, it is about the Irula. They call it Irula in South India, Tamil Nadu. It's actually Irula. So the Irula people, they are expert snake catchers, and they are also a particularly vulnerable tribal group. Group. Very. I mean, their numbers are declining very fast. So they were invited to catch snakes. So now uh, this is a current affairs. Okay. So these kind of current affairs will keep on coming. Okay. So uh, where was I? Um, Uh, what was it going to talk let me recall okay so for example you get this kind of uh, you know uh, news and you think that others may not have this in their answer you know so you have to use such current affairs yes and such current affairs are going to make a great difference in your answer i'll give you two small examples you know one is recently happened uh there is a place in madhya pradesh called dhaba some diggings were done here some excavation was done in dhaba as well as 
around river Malawi. Which continent? Malawi? South Africa? South Africa like Africa continent. Africa, yeah. It's very close yeah. to South Africa, yeah. Right. Southwest Africa, you can say. So Malawi, Malawi, you know, um, river around, so Malawi's country has a river called Malawi. Malawi River ke on the uh, banks of River Malawi and in MP, Dhaba. An excavation was done and this excavation has busted a, a decades old myth. So there was a myth. You can say it was almost a proven theory that around 75,000 years ago, there was a super volcanic eruption. It is called the Toba eruption. Toba, T O B A, Toba was a volcano in uh, Indonesia. Around 75,000 years ago, it erupted and it was one of the biggest eruptions in over 25 million years. 25 million. Yani ki, how many years? 25 million. Yani ki, 2 crore 50 lakh saal. 2 crore 50 lakh years ke history mein, it was the biggest explosion that happened around 75,000 years ago in Indonesia. So, do you know something called volcanic winter? Can anyone tell me what is volcanic winter? So due to the eruption, you know, uh, there's a lot of SO2 and all in the uh, atmosphere, in the air. Yes. Uh, right. Due to which and when they settle down, right, the ashes and all, that creates a system. Basically, that is, I suppose, it's called... No, it actually uh, happens when... It actually happens because they don't settle down. Uh, they are in the air, right? The SO2 hmm. that is exploded. Yeah. So this volcano erupted, you know, the amount of ash and other material it, you know, gave out that was pumped up so high in the atmosphere that it went beyond the troposphere. It went into the stratosphere. All the weather phenomena, you know, your wind movement on cyclones and all happen in the troposphere. It went beyond troposphere into the stratosphere and there it spread out and remained there for more than 10 years. It took more than 10, 10 years for the smoke and ash to settle down, which means for 10 years there was dark, no sunlight. As a result, what will happen? No life. No life. So the plants will die out because no photosynthesis. And all life depends on the plants, directly or indirectly. So other life will also die out. So the theory went like this, that because of this explosion 75,000 years ago, there was this volcanic winter because of which uh, it was very difficult to survive and the entire human race was reduced to some 10,000 individuals, only 10,000 individuals. And after you know these 10,000 individuals somehow survived and saw through that period. You know, maybe they were located in parts other than the, the parts that were affected mostly. So Asia and Africa were badly affected. Europe and all were not affected that badly. So maybe these people belong to other continents. They somehow survived. And then the today's 8 billion plus population of the world is actually the progeny of these 10,000. So all these billions of people come from, from only from these 10,000 people. And that's why there is no, that, that's why so much great similarity. So that 99.99% .99 of your genome is same as the one, as anyone else in the, in the planet. So every human, they are 99.99% .99 similar genetically because they all come from a very small stock. So that's why the very less diversity. This is called a population bot bottleneck. It is in our syllabus. population bottleneck. It's like the population was like this. It passed through a very small, narrow, like a neck of the bottle and then again increased. So when you take a bottle, for example, there's a bottle 
and this bottle is full of marbles it is full of maybe hundreds of marbles if i suddenly mm. invert the bottle will all 100 marbles fall out what happens if i suddenly invert this bottle how many marbles come out do all of them come out all 100 no total what net happens? effect they get stuck me. they get stuck because of the neck and only 3 4 will fall out out of the 100 only 4 5 will fall out and then the bottle neck will get stuck because of the shape of the neck of the bottle they all try to come out at the same time only 3 4 can come out and the rest cannot so this is what happens when the population passes through a phase where not every individual but very few individuals can survive and then the remaining population is coming from those few individuals this is called population bottleneck okay so now this population bottleneck theory it says that 75000 years ago something like that have happened but now two years ago excavations in mp and malawi they showed that this may not be true what they did was they excavated that these two places in mp and africa and they found out so 75000 years ago it was what what age was it was it stone age what is bronze age was was it iron age any idea guys what age was it stone age bronze age copper age or golden age what age anyone try to guess 75000 years ago stone stone only stone age okay it was stone age not even new stone age it was old stone age or middle stone age somewhere so people were making stone tools mostly they were making tools called hand axes cleavers chopper chopping tool ha uh, cleavers also cleavers chopper and chopping tool that is what they were making so the study found out that so much ash came out from this volcano that around you know 20 to 30 cm thick ash layer was deposited so that ash from the volcano made a 20 to 30 cm thick layer in the archaeological finds but the number of stone tools before and the number of stone tools after remain the same there was no sudden major difference in the number of stone tools found before the ash layer and after the ash layer so if the number of tools are same means number of tool maker also remains the same right or wrong right or wrong guys right sir right so this excavation proves that human population has not gone through a bottleneck this is a current affairs that can add great value to your answer yes or no right another example so most of the sources that you read about homo sapiens that is our own species just one second mm. so most of the you know Uh, sources you read about our species homo sapiens they will tell you that homo sapiens our species are is around 2 lakh years old appeared on the earth 2 lakh years ago before this there was you know others like you know homo erectus neanderthals and all homo sapiens 2 lakh years ago it appeared why it said so because no fossil older than 2 lakh years old had been found for homo sapiens so even today books are being printed with this time frame but in 2018 19 there was a find at a place called jebel irhud which country any guesses uh, israel the name yeah the name uh, seems like that but it's not israel actually turkey yeah so so uh, it's a difficult question actually because what you are saying is not wrong these kind of names <laughs> are found in israel turkey and all but actually it was africa oh, okay. 
This is Africa. This is Arabian Peninsula. This is Italy. This is Spain and Portugal. This is Denmark and all. Fine. So this is your. So this East Africa. This East Africa, especially this place, which is the Great Rift Valley. By the way, why is it called Great Rift Valley? Why is it called? Any idea? Read, read about this. Great tectonics. Guys, you should be happy. It's a session. It's a free session of anthropology, and you are also getting some knowledge regarding geography. So, why is it called a rift valley? Because it is simply it is rifting. This part is breaking up because Africa is not a single plate. It is made of two plates. One tectonic plate is moving this side. One is moving that side. Some millions of years ago, there was no Red Sea. This Red Sea was not there. This was part of Africa. This Arabian Peninsula. Now it has separated. Many many million years ago, there was no Atlantic Ocean. You know, Europe and North America, South America, and Africa were one part. You know, together. So. a million million years later there will not be a single africa there will be two africas it is breaking up yahan se two tribe beech mein se beech mein there will be an ocean ek ocean aa jayega and one part will be on the east on west africa is breaking up into two parts as of now it may break into more parts also so this is the great rift valley it extends like this all the way like this you know across africa goes into israel has anyone read about it not read about it anyone guys at least they know no sir okay theek hai these are very important things you know because you may get this question in gs1 of your uh, uh, mains fine so this rift valley is called the cradle of humanity cradle of humanity because till recently Almost ninety percent of fossils. Almost all fossils were first found here. Australopithecus, Australopithecus found here. Erectus found here. Homo habilis found here. Homo sapiens found here. Apart from Neanderthals, Neanderthals, Neanderthals were found in Europe. So most of the humans ancestors found in East African Valley, Rift Valley. So East Africa was considered the cradle of humanity. Theory number one, and Homo sapiens two lakh years old. Theory number two. both these theories were rejected or have been challenged have been rendered null and void both these theories of east africa being cradle of humanity and homo sapiens being only 2 lakh years old both have been challenged because of a find somewhere here in morocco place called jebel irhud first of all this place is located not in east africa but northwestern africa so east africa is not the cradle of humanity A Homo sapiens fossil found, which is three lakh years old, pushing the Homo sapiens history back by one lakh years. So, Homo sapiens fossil, which is three lakh years old, not found in East Africa. Again, a current affairs. This kind of news is going to add great value to your answer if you combine it with a diagram like this. Yes or no, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, right. So this is one way of scoring good in anthropology. Two more quick points. One will be your. This is a a boring part, you know. But if you have to, you have taken anthropology, and if you want to score three hundred plus, you have to mug up. Lot of mugging up may be involved. What mugging up authors, mugging up scholars, and books name? So, you know, writing just the concept, writing just the. knowledge part of it what you know about it that is there in gs also what makes an optional paper different from gs is these you give the names of the scholars names of the books names of the authors the person who has given that theory the person who has written that book you know all those things they are very important without them you will not get good good marks and i am saying this from personal experience 
you will not get good marks you will, your marks you know because if you are not putting in the scholars name the books name you know their research papers name the ea all those then it is as good as gs it is not an optional paper okay. so you got to remember these and how do you remember these it's very simple you don't have to do research for this it is there in all standard textbooks the normal standard textbooks when they talk about evolutionism they tell you tyler morgan fraser when you read about diffusionism you have those scholars when you functionalism you have those scholars all the scholars names all the scholars books names everything is there in the book already all you got to do is don't ignore them mug them up that will make your answer you know a proper optional answer a lot of students because you know you once read the concept concept is interesting bottleneck bahut simple samajh mein aa gaya acha laga you remembered it but you don't remember the guy's name who gave the concept you know so you have to remember that part as well right now the last bit and a very important one last but not the least as they say is integrating paper 1 and 2 paper 1 and 2 should be integrated in your answer so the question asks you about for example let's take you know last year's paper only this last question paper the last year that came it talked about animism and deep ecology has any one of you seen the question paper last last year question paper jo is par mains ka tha has anyone seen that paper yes sir this is question number 1 paper 1 question 1a is deep animism uh, animism and deep ecology can anyone explain this concept to me Okay, fine. No issues. So, here, yeah, no. Tell me. Uh, worshiping elements of nature. Sorry. Like worshiping yeah. ele elements of nature. Yeah, worshiping elements of nature is animism. Worshiping elements of nature, deifying, Bhagwan banana. Na. Make the elements of nature as God. Any example, Noel? Sun God. A lot of yes, examples. sun God. Spe yes. uh like uh, in many tribes they consider mountains as you know or trees yes yes as, uh, so basic examples of it see our vedic gods indra rudra vayu indra indra was nothing but the you know the the rain and the thunder they personified personified the rain and thunder as a god indra theek okay. hai the wind as the as the god vayu pavan the fire as the god agni elements of nature are deified elements of nature are deified that is animism okay but animism is not only that animism is also part of our syllabus can anyone uh, noel should try to recall the name of the scholar related with animism Not able to recollect the name. Classical evolutionism. E. B. Tyler. E. B. Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. E. B. Tyler. When did he give the concept of animism regarding what? Why he did he talk about animism? Tyler was a classical evolutionist. He was trying to give the evolution of religion. how religion may have evolved so he said that he explained it by something called as dream death experience now noel should be able to recall yes sir the wo yes mar jane wala sir ki de mar jane wala thoda detail mein batao sir wo keh raha tha na ki jaise death hota hai agar so raha hai to ek equivalent to death but agar subah nahi jage तो फिर दो तीन दिन देखता है ये दे से दे अब मर गया right. तो उस हिसाब से कैसे वो एक तरह से जाके पुराने जमाने में और वो एक्सपीरियंस करना चाह रहा था कि कैसे वो लोग इवॉल्व सिविलाइज्ड हुए हैं ओके या सो टाइलर वाज ट्राइंग टू थिंक कि हाउ रिलीजन में हैव इवॉल्व सो टाइलर थॉट टाइलर द गाइज नेम इज टाइलर दो आर न्यू टू एंथ्रोपोलॉजी एंड दो आर जस्ट स्टार्टिंग ऑफ रिमेंबर दिस गाय रिमेंबर द नेम 
he will be there he will be there to haunt you again and again he is a very important hero of your movie of anthropology he is the Culture first definition. hero in fact he is the first hero okay of your anthropology eb tyler edward burnett tyler yeah so this guy he was thinking how religion may have evolved how religion may have started okay so he thought that primitive man primitive man was not a scientific guy okay primitive man he doesn't have science he doesn't know why dreams come he doesn't know why people die he doesn't have that you no know, science so he's trying to think what is you know when i'm sleeping i see something that dream what is that how do i reach such places you know i usually cannot when i'm here i I'm, i usually when i try to climb that tree i'm not able to but when i was sleeping i could see i was on the tree i, I had climbed the tree and i climbed it so fast suddenly i was on the tree suddenly i was on that mountain top suddenly i was here suddenly i was doing this suddenly i was with my favorite tribal girl whatever i want i was getting that you no know, when i was sleeping what was that how was that happening so basically man was thinking about the dream he was not able to understand ki what was that that dream thing that was happening okay and he was also puzzled about death that when i slept today i wake up i sl- i sleep and i wake up but some people they sleep and they don't wake up they never wake up and then we have to bury their body what is that so basically he was thinking about dream and death what is dream what what is death so primitive man thought that when we are sleeping something from our body which later became the concept of soul something from our body comes out comes out and it goes to all those places that we are seeing in the dreams so actually it's happening our soul is going out and is visiting those places right and in the morning the soul comes back into my body and then i wake up and if for some reason the soul soul does not come back then i don't wake up and that is death that according to tyler was the primitive man's way of explaining dream and death and now the man thought the soul thing that is coming out of my body how powerful it is see i cannot go on top of that mountain or i will take you know some time maybe a few days to climb or here there but my soul suddenly reached there all of a sudden it reached on the top of the mountain and suddenly it came down my soul is so fast so powerful so fast it is faster than light you know it is said that the human mind so in the mahabharat there is a scene called the yaksha prashna anyone knows this क्या है Yeah. So one of the questions was, what travels faster than light? So Yudhishthir's reply was, man. Yeah. yeah. Our man, our thoughts, our thoughts travel, you know, faster. Not man actually thoughts. Our thoughts travel faster than you know light. Suddenly they are here. Suddenly they are there. You know, light will also take nine minutes from sun to reach earth. But right now. in the next second i can imagine about sun and i am there not even a second light takes you know 8 minutes and a few seconds to travel this distance so man thought soul is so powerful and this if you know this this uh thing turned into kind of respect and reverence for the soul respect reverence that turned into worship of soul and worshiping of soul was the beginning of religion people started worshiping souls that is how religion began okay so worship of souls and since soul in latin is called anima so worship of soul became animism that was the first stage of religion according to tyler so basically this is how tyler says religion began so the question was about animism and deep ecology so when you are talking about the souls and then deep ecology people's respect for the nature you know 
these two concepts are there in paper 1 but here you can combine paper 2 you can give the example of a concept from paper 2 what is the concept guys nature it's man spirit a, complex a spirit. this is a concept in paper 2 nature man spirit complex nature man spirit man is the tribal guy lives in the nature the jal jungle zameen the pahad the mountains they provide him everything and his spirits the ancestor spirit the spirits of the ancestors the spirits that he worships the good and the bad spirits that bring about good health or you know if they are angry then the child there will be you no know, miscarriage of children there will be disease and death but if they are happy then there will be prosperous and good hunt good produce so those spirits they live in the forests in the jungles you know so man gets everything from the nature the spirits live in the nature man is dependent on the depend on the spirits also so all this thing they combine to form the man nature spirit complex so this concept of paper 2 can also be mentioned if you are talking about animism and deep ecology which is a paper 1 concept so like this you know if you if when writing an answer if you can writing a paper one answer you bring about a paper two concept there and mention about it in just one line or writing a paper two answer you mention a paper one ka concept the examiner will be very impressed that you have studied the subject very nicely without understanding the subject inside out you cannot relate paper one paper two so try to develop an understanding in such a way that you can relate paper one concepts with paper two concepts in writing your answers and don't limit yourself if you are writing a paper 2 answer doesn't mean that you will limit yourself only to topics of paper 2 you can give the name of a scholar or a study from paper 1 in paper 2 answers and vice versa if you do this integration this is going to be great for getting marks in anthropology the examiner is really going to be impressed okay guys yes so okay so paper 1 paper 2 integration you see there will, you will get lot of things where you can integrate paper 1 paper 2 bahut sara aisa lot of places you will get okay uh for example when you study paper 2 there is a concept called jajmani has anyone read and can anyone uh, does anyone know about this concept jajmani system yes sir what is jajmani system like service provider and the the in in response the who takes the service gives some Mm-hmm. Grains or something else to the service giver, sir. Hmm. What is the name of the guy? What is the name? so so? There is a guy for whom I do service. This is me. I. This is you. Okay. You ask me to do a service. Suppose you ask me to wash your clothes. i wash your clothes i am the wash i am the village washer man i wash your clothes in return you know i wash your clothes in return you give me food grains it's a village you give me food grains this is jajmani system right so you who is asking me to the, do the job you are the jajman and what is the term for the guy who is doing it for me come in come in jajman and kamin okay so jajman and kamin jajmani system is there in the lot of indian villages it used to be there uh, very deeply entrenched now it is not like that so there is a big landlord of the village if there is a marriage in his house you know the goldsmith the village goldsmith will make the jewelry the village washerman will do the washing of the clothes the village iron smith will provide the tools and implements the village carpenter will make all the furniture required they do it and in return they get food grains and stuff from the landlord this was jajmani system now this jajmani system of paper 2 can be related to paper 1 economic anthropology balanced reciprocity who all have read about balanced reciprocity anyone read about reciprocity yes sir read yes, sir yeah hmm. so reciprocity this is also balanced reciprocity i am doing something from him i am getting in return and so this return is not exact money value but it is not unfair it is not unfair usually i get what i expect 
so this is a balanced reciprocity yes someone say asking something uh, nothing sir uh, just you have given the point what yeah. i was going to say yeah so it's you know balanced reciprocity just like you know uh, in balance just like many tribes have it lot of tribes have balanced reciprocity when i give you for example i live in the coastal areas you live inland so the coastal area tribes they get fish and the inland tribes they get they grow grains so the inland tribes and the coastal tribes they exchange fish and grain and there is no fixed rate because they are not there for profit and loss they are just dependent on each other so there is no fixed rate that if i give you 10 fish you give me one you know one basket of grain nothing like that it's just they happily they take, give, give and take without having any fixed measurement you know and it is not unfair both parties feel that they have done a fair deal okay so this is jajmani this is the uh, balanced reciprocity something similar happens happens in jajmani system yes sometimes it can be exploitative where there is a bonded labor a zamindar is very cruel guy you know but usually it is not because i have seen this practically in my village itself where you know there are a lot of people who used to work in our fields and do lot of other things and end of the year when there is harvest when the grains are harvested we used to call them and tell them ki yeah, just pick up you know whichever sack of grains you want to pick up you can pick up you know and they could simply just pick up and remember that they were not getting it only from our family they were getting it from many families in the village because they were work, providing service to several other families so they they used to get the entire year's grain supply this was the jajmani system without use of any currency without the use of use of any uh, hard currency any money you know the village was self sufficiently doing everything inside the village only you know that's why some people also called the indian villages as mini republics you know because it was a self sufficient village everyone everything happening in the village only but now it has changed now it is not so so this this is this is called the jajmani system which is same as balanced reciprocity one is a paper one concept one is a paper two concept when writing the answer of jajmani you can give you know you can mention that this is like balanced reciprocity and when writing the example of balanced reciprocity in paper 1 you can give ex as example the jajmani system of indian villages so you can link paper 1 and paper 2 here also so like this you know the more you read the more you understand the better you can link paper 1 and paper 2 and get good marks okay guys yes sir yeah so that will be the end of uh, the session and uh, hope you guys uh, you know get some benefit out of the session and uh, yes we you know at diademy we have uh, our foundation courses you know uh, for 2022 and 23 anthropology if any of you are interested you know you can contact us you can check out some of our sample classes uh, which are taken by me i am the faculty of anthropology so you can check some of the sample classes uh, i will ask Uh, one of uh, on in the search uh, one of our you know um, staff to share sample classes links with you guys can have a look in the sample classes and if you feel that the classes meet your requirements you can definitely contact us okay guys we also have answer writing programs by the way so that will be it and uh, if you have any uh, questions you need any one to one attention you have any one on one counseling you need you know you have some more questions regarding anthropology how to prepare what to read you know what all for all that also you can contact me uh, and i think my details will be shared with you guys okay thank you sir okay guys thank you guys have a nice day bye bye thank you sir thank you sir bye 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 bye, bye.